to the Bayview Podcast with hosts Andrew Clark and Chris Emery. This is designed to be a discussion on all things life and faith. We hope this serves as a weekly resource and encouragement to you. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Bayview Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Andrew, joined as always by Chris Emery. How are you, sir? I'm doing very, very good, man. How are you doing today? Doing well. Sweet. Yeah. Good. Back in the studio, back in here, hanging out, talking about everything. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. It is good times. I actually just got back. We had an event going on down the road at a park with uh, the ice cream truck. It's like, (laughs) I, I guess it was all you can eat. I don't know. Like it was for our seniors ministry yeah. and I went up and got mine and I'm watching, I'm watching, man, these seniors can put away some ice cream. Yeah. It's like they're, it's like one of the food groups of being old. I think. I guess so. Cause they were going back two, three, yeah. you know, ro- rolls, you know, it's fine. It's awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. Uh, just hanging out with them a little bit and, uh, we're kind of wrapping up summer and I, I think we're all starting to feel, I don't know if I say feel the crunch, but Kind of weird that summer's kind of already mm. coming to a close. A lot of kids started school this week in different parts of the country. Yeah, I have a couple friends who I think, like, we're talking about downstate. Like, they're starting school Monday. Really? Downstate? Like, some of those places. And, yeah, I, I always thought, you know, up here, up, you know, in Traverse City area, it's I feel like it's always, like, after Labor Day is when we would start school. But mm-hmm. mid-August seems to be the starting time for a lot of people. My my niece down in Alabama started Monday, this yeah. past Monday. So It's yeah. crazy. I know sports are starting. Volleyball, football, a lot of those sports are getting up and rolling. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that those things kind of make it feel like fall, like we're heading towards the end of summer, the last couple of days, and, um, which is cool. Fall brings routine. Yeah. But yeah. Still and I, I love a lot about fall, but, man, I, I, I don't know. I love summer so much. I always there's always like this summer regret. I get to the end of summer and it's like there's so much I wanted I wish to I would do. Have done more. Yeah. yeah. Kind of yeah. like Schindler's summer. Schindler's list kind of vibe. Like I could have done more, right? <laughs> yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. We we've we've had a good summer. We've made the most of it. But it also, you know, we always do a summer teaching series here at Bayview and we always take time to kinda take those three months and that makes it go fast because we have the summer preaching schedule. It's something you and I work on. And, and all of a sudden it's like, wait, we're checking these boxes off fast. Yeah. Especially when we sit down at the beginning, we're like, oh, 13, 14 weeks of something. You're like, oh, okay. Like, we're going to be in this forever. Right. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, there's two weeks left. You're like, yeah. Oh, okay. Here we go. It, it's crazy. And I think there is only two weeks left after this week. Yeah. I think that's we right. Two topics left. That's right. So. But no, it's been good. It's been really good. Yeah, I think so. I mean, have you found yourself in a lot of good combos on the back end of some of this where people are like, hey, that, this is helping me? Yeah, I, I think we've talked about it quite a bit on this where it's just like, it's just been nice to see people kind of getting the idea of like, we're, again, we're instilling confidence in faith and, and why we believe what we'll believe. And um, I'm just hearing that more and more from people mm-hmm. like, okay, yeah, I have thought that. And now I feel like, I can put some words to it. There's yeah. a little more of a, um, I feel, I feel like I can actually talk about it and articulate what I, what I believe. Yeah. And, and so I think that's been, that's been really cool. It's even led into, you know, this week we're talking about heaven and hell and mm-hmm. are they real places and just kind of all that that comes with it, which again, it's like, I think for a lot of people, it's always the like, well, yeah, heaven's going to be, all have wings and be super bright and we'll be blinded half the time because it'll be so bright and shiny and hell there's pitchforks and fire. So yeah. it was in- interesting to kind of spend some time and I thought you did really well this week kind of really breaking down what it was, mm-hmm. what it is, what is heaven and hell. So, Well, growing up the way we did, uh, both of us growing up in church, both of us growing up as pastor's kids, was there ever a time you remember questioning whether or not heaven and hell were real? Or was that just always like, yeah, those are real? It was always interesting because I was thinking about I feel like as a kid, I would think, okay, so I got to go up past space mm-hmm. to get to heaven. Yeah. And I guess the center of the earth is where hell would be. <laughs> well, like, it kind of makes sense. <laughs> so it was like, I, I feel like that was my natural <laughs> thought as a child of like, 
hell's in the ground and heaven is in the sky way above what we can see. Yeah. Um, so when people would ever say like, oh, they're going to the heavens, when they talk about people going up into space, I'd be like, oh, man. like So lucky. Wow. They're going to get to check it out. That's cool. <laughs> so that was that was for me as a kid. I don't think I ever doubted per se, but I, I think there was that sense of like, but where are they? Yeah. Well, that's kind of the cartoon perception yeah. that we've all seen where there's plenty of imagery of a of a pit opening up in the ground and people being thrown down. Yep. And now, granted, that comes from a lot of the terminology from the Bible because the mm. Bible says that, you know, that they will be thrown down to the fiery pit, you know, yeah. to the eternal fire. Um, Jesus ascended into the heavens to yep. be by the Father. And I think there's times where, you know, they've looked up. And so I, I think that that's the natural uh imagery we take because yeah. the Bible alludes to that. Now the Bible doesn't come out and say it that way. And yep. I don't think hell is at the center of the earth necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think there's any doubt despite, I don't even say recent despite despite popular desires to have another fact or another mm-hmm. look at it. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Yeah. If we take the Bible at its word, which we do. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. I would agree, and I, I think that's that's now where where I would stand. It's like okay, th- these are real places. It's it's not, and it's not a a visitation. Like okay, sweet. I'm glad I checked this place out. Right. Now, let's get back to it. Like I don't, I don't think there's that too. It's it's like, um, I think as growing, you realize like the spiritual realm of the you know of mm-hmm. life, and there's just so much we don't see and and don't know, and so, um. Well, there's so many flippant statements too. Like we, I've heard friends say it, or maybe we've seen it in the movies where it's like, you know, we're gonna party in hell, or I'll see you in hell, yeah. or I'm going to hell. I'm fine. You know, like there's this embracing of it almost. Where yep. like there's some people like it is what it is. Let's go. And there's like this, I can take it, and yeah. it's like, whoa, you know, <laughs> you probably need to stop, yeah, and really dig into the Bible. Well, yeah, it just sounds cool, right? Like I, <laughs> I just watched the movie Unforgiven, like the okay. Western yeah, with yeah. Clint Eastwood, and the villain's dying. He he literally says, I'll see you in hell. And yeah. Clint Eastwood's response is, yeah. And it's just such a cool, like I'm watching a movie even now as a 30 year old. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But, but yeah. then you're like, oh yeah. What is he actually saying there? And it's just like, that's not quite as cool. It's a cool movie line. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, and so there has been a movement over, over, I mean, I don't want to even say recent. There has been a movement, especially for people to say, Hell isn't real. Like, hell's not a real place. I don't think I've heard a lot of Christians, and I'm talking within the Christian community because, you know, you get outside the Christian community and that's a totally different topic. Mm. But uh, I've not heard a lot of Christian talk of, like, well, heaven's not real. So I think we're all like, no, heaven's totally real. Like, let's do that. But hell, uh, that sounds tough. Let's not. No one wants to imagine a place of you eternal damnation mm-hmm. right like no one wants the thought of, it's like i'd rather yeah have the thought of uh yeah there's streets of gold mm-hmm. or worm food mm-hmm. yeah and, and we almost like we um yeah we undermine the fact of like no like it's it there's something to this yeah. like it's not it's not just kind of like oh yeah you just died it's like no there's there's something coming well and i think that that one of the more popular things in the last decade or so and not to just pile on him because he's not the only one, but Rob Bell mm-hmm. made a name for himself. Uh, his NUMA videos were viewed by millions, yeah. uh, thriving big church at, right here in the state of Michigan, um, and then comes out with his book, Love Wins. Yeah. And not to oversimplify it, but the basic premise is that in the end, God's love wins out with every person. Mm. Uh, that at some point, whether it's here or after death, every person will experience God's love and end up in heaven. And so yeah. he kind of presents this empty hell theory that yeah. in the end there will be no people in hell. And I think I even said this Sunday, there's a huge part of me that is tempted to be like, yeah, I, that would be awesome. Yeah, And it would be awesome if we look through the scope of the friends and family we all have that don't know Jesus. Yeah, Of course, because none of us want to think about anybody we know experiencing the torment the Bible attempts to unpack for us. And that's the best it can do is attempt yeah. to explain. Just like it can only attempt to explain how great heaven's going to be, we can't grasp it. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I think there's that temptation for us. 
Yeah, because again, it it would be nice to think of those that we love of like, okay, they'll get a slap on the wrist, mm-hmm. but or but a second I, chance. Oh yeah, or the second chance, and but then you start going down that path. And you're like, okay, so basically they're going to be forced to love God. Mm-hmm. That that doesn't sound like a relationship, and that doesn't sound real. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like the get out of jail free, get out of hell free card. Like that's essentially yeah. what it is. Like oh, I have to. Yeah, and I think we again we begin to undermine a lot of aspects of knowing Christ when we just mm-hmm. kind of say, oh, in the end, we're, and it, this sounds like a competition, but oh, in the end, we're all going to end up at the, we all get the medal in the end, we mm-hmm. all get the trophy in the end. It's mm-hmm. like, well, that that undermines a lot of how we should be living now. Like there's so much, I think, tied to um, the universalist type mm-hmm. mindset. And that's really what Rob is promoting, yeah. u- universalism, yeah. that at the end, everybody makes it. And I mean, we've talked about this several weeks ago. That that would ensue. That would include the 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 philosophy that it doesn't matter what you call God, yep. uh, He'll answer whatever name Allah, Buddha, Confucius, whatever you want to call Him. Uh, which then opens up the door to well, there's actually multiple paths to God, ultimate paths to eternity with Him, mm-hmm. uh, and it really kind of just changes the whole dynamics, and it also unravels all of the fabric of the gospel. Yeah. It's true. I mean, really it does. There's no parts of the gospel left in that story. Yeah. And that's what was so interesting um, about that book and that approach from somebody that historically had been a really, really solid preacher of the gospel. Yeah, Rob Bell is incredibly intelligent. He has a, yeah. he has a documentary or a, not a documentary, but a video he made called Everything is Spiritual. And yeah. It, it was it's one of my favorite things to watch for, just in general, because yeah. he, he just, he so articulates like what it means to be a believer. Mm-hmm. So then a fast forward a couple of years now, he's basically been like essentially undermining a lot of what he taught. It, yeah. It, it was just kind of disappointing. Yeah. So, so obviously we'll, we'll touch on this real briefly. Uh, the Bible is very clear that mm-hmm. there is plenty of, of things given to us that, that support uh, the reality of both heaven and hell. Uh, when it comes to hell, uh, Jesus himself spoke about hell more than anybody else in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And I love the way uh, Pastor Alistair Be- Begg put it, uh, and that is that the, the most loving man on earth was the one that spoke the most about hell. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like, oh, well, what was wrong with Jesus? Nothing. That, that was him speaking in love. Yeah. And I don't think we can say there's genuine love without there being absolute truth and understanding of, like, listen— these are both things that these are the two options. They're the two results, I guess. Yeah. Um, and so he does go into it and the Bible talks a lot about it. it talks about, and again, when I say this, what I said a minute ago, when it talks about, it's an attempt to, to help us see a glimpse of what it is going to be like, but we can't grasp it. Yeah. And I think that goes to both sides of this coin. And that is, I don't think we can even fathom the torment. Mm of what hell will be. And we'll touch on that in a second. But I don't think we can understand the, the, the experience of heaven. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, especially we, we use language like, oh, they're healed or there'll be, be life. It's like, I don't know. I don't think we've ever even lived a full life to even understand what a full life is mm-hmm. even that, you know, we potentially experience in heaven and, and some of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think that's fair to say it's like for us, it's it's like a lot of these concepts, a lot of these things we're talking about, like our our mind can only process so much. Right. So it's almost like the Bible does as a service at some level by only giving us so much without being an overload that it would it wouldn't make any sense anyways. Well, I think it's just we can only understand what we can relate to. So mm-hmm. the Bible gives us just scriptures that we can relate to. Yeah. But I, I don't think we still, like, it. you know, the Bible talks a lot about that hell is a place of darkness. And uh, it's, it's a darkness that, that is, in Jude, it says the blackest darkness. Yeah. What's the darkest place you've ever been? Uh, probably a cave or my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of someplace crazy dark. Like, like have you ever been to one of those cavern tours, like DeSoto Caverns? or any, have you ever been Yeah, it's the deeper you go. I've never been in them, but I've seen the videos and some of that kind of stuff. And yeah. it's, Dude, it is, it is 
unreal. It's it's a darkness yeah. that that even the darkest place, like a darkest room, like you get down there, and there is something so thick about it. Mm. Yeah, because uh, you go so far down. I mean, you're just you're you're, you know, way 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 down in the middle of the earth, and then they kill the lights, and and your eye and your brain, all of your sensors are are searching hopelessly mm. for anything to grab hope of, ho- grab a hold of for a reference point. Yeah. Wow. And and there is no reference point. So you're in this void mm. that is very disorienting and and for me was very scary. Yeah. Because you when they say you can't see your hand in front of your face, well you can't, but we could recreate that even in a room. But this just felt different. It's hard to describe mm. because there was such an absolute void of light. Yeah. We, your eyes are probably looking for light to adjust to to help you see stuff. That's mm-hmm. it, I mean, that's what, basically what happens in, in dark. And I can't imagine not there'd be no light to even find. So yeah, 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 that's, yeah and that's a good point because like even if we go to a very dark space here, uh, like in a room or something, your eyes start to adjust and you might feel a little bit of of mm-hmm. orientation. Yeah. But there's nothing. Your eyes grasp nothing. And Wild. and so yeah, so we're talking about the dark. But that's the Bible saying like, listen, here's a glimpse, like. It's still darker than that somehow. Mm. Um, I, I think that you know Jesus uses the term gnashing of teeth, which growing up was a term I heard multiple times. Yeah, but they, and I don't know why. Like maybe that, did they teach us that in Sunday school a lot? Did they use that term? The weeping and gnashing of the teeth. The weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. Yeah. And I just picture like an old woman crying and someone grinding their teeth. Like I was just like, yeah, that does sound pretty scary. <laughs> I shared a room with my brother growing up, and he would grind his teeth at night sometimes. It's a scary sound. Yeah. It's painful. Like, like what is happening? Yeah. But this is even talking about like you're, you're grinding it, it out of pain and torment. Like agony. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're, like you're, your jaw muscles are, are clenching out of the pain. And I, I don't know. You mentioned Westerns. I've seen the Westerns where they have a guy bite down on a stick so they can cut the bullet out yeah. of him. But maybe that's the same reason. Like yeah. out of pain, does your, your body just clenches and. Yeah, stiffen up. Like you're, you're just trying to f- almost like fend off. Like it's like you said about the dark. Like your body is trying to find a point of reference, mm-hmm. like something to help mm-hmm. numb it or feel it or or experience it in a way that's not so painful. It's like to not yeah. be able to. Again, we're not even comprehending that. Like again, I I picture the <laughs> your brother grinding your teeth and your sister crying in the corner. It's like, yeah, that would suck, but that's not hell. <laughs> like, <laughs> it felt like it at the yeah. time, but hell on earth. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you take all those imageries and go further, and then yeah. of course you get into Isaiah, and there's a couple other really disturbing images given. Uh, you mm-hmm. mentioned it already, where it says, "For the worms that devour them will never die." Yeah. It's like if whether that's literal or figurative, it's still God through the author Isaiah trying to give us a glimpse of you don't get it. Yeah, mm. this is gonna be bad. Yeah, and so like you know, if we embrace that imagery of like worms devouring our flesh, but they don't ever die, and our flesh yeah. just keeps coming back. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I would really want it to be one of those worms from Dune. Oh, just, dude, just maybe those are the worms. <laughs> Yeah, but you could, I feel you just disappear with one of those things. That I'm picturing like earthworms that are just kind of just hang around. and But miniature dune worms. Yeah, How about gross. those? Gross, anyway, bro. yeah. <laughs> but, well, it, but, but again, it's yeah. like our, that's where we're, all we keep talking about is point of reference. And it's like, but it's not. Point of reference. It's not even to be like that. Yeah. Like it's going to be, we, we're not even going to comprehend like what that, mm-hmm. what that actually would be like. Take what you can and make it much worse. Yeah. So, and then of course it talks a lot about fire and yeah. fire is probably the most common thing we attach to hell yep. because biblically they use the words, the fire, the eternal fire, fires of hell, yeah. uh, fire and brimstone, blazing furnace. So these are not man-made images. These are, God's given us these images yeah. as, as you said, a minute, a reference point yeah. to at least begin to understand to the best of our ability what this will be like. Yeah. And then Jesus gives us this parable uh, in the book of Luke where he talks about a rich man finds himself in hell mm. and he sees Abraham standing across the chasm with Lazarus and he asks, can you just send Lazarus over to dip his finger in the water and just touch my tongue? Yeah. So just touch my tongue with a finger that's been dipped in the water. Now, I, we've all been in spots where we're super, super thirsty. You yeah. know, like you work out, I work out, we played sports. I've been... I've been bone dry thirsty before. Yeah. 
and I'll be honest with you, somebody dipping their finger in water, like say we came off the field at halftime of a soccer game, and yep. that was what they offered us. You coach basketball. I want you to do that this next, next year. <laughs> yeah. Here, you guys. Here, buddy. <laughs> oh, you're thirsty. Here you go. Yeah. It's not going to do anything. Yeah. But to this man in his torment, because he even uses the word, I'm in such torment, um, or I'm in anguish is actually what the one translation says. Yeah. That alone, that, that, that sounded great to him. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I was just kind of thinking of that this week. Like, wow, that's, yeah. that's a different level. Yeah, it's like true dehydration, true separation of mm-hmm. of anything refreshing. Yeah, um, of anything good, like almost like a void of moisture in your body, mm-hmm. which is hard to imagine. Yeah, and that's where I, 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 because I've also heard the term used like hell is just eternal separation from Christ, mm-hmm. and it's like, but even some of the stuff we're just initially talking about, it's like when you talk about warmth, like that's when something is too hot, like that's we're now it's past comfortable Mm -hmm. and needing just a drop of water would, would become anywhere close to satisfying. It's like, again, the the separation of, of a comfort of a, uh, of being nourished and, and uh, everything just points back to like, it is, it it is like the opposite of all things good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That just, that sounds scary. (laughs) Again. Yeah. We just still can't even quite grasp that. Yeah. Now, on the flip side, then, the Bible also talks about heaven Mm -hmm. in the same reference point, meaning just like we can't fathom the depths of hell, we we really don't understand. Yeah. Because there are plenty of the cartoony images of, like, what you said, floating on clouds, it's everything. Yeah, we all got wings, the milk and honey, rivers. I'm just like, what does that look like? The... the (laughs) The Wizard of Oz, Golden Brick Road. (laughs) Like, it's like, there's all these things that can very quickly cartoon it for us. Yeah. Um... But that's just what our mind, again, the point of reference yeah. is like, okay, well, <laughs> I guess I could see it. <laughs> yeah, and even like we talked a little bit about Sunday, even the misunderstanding of mansions and the misuse yeah. of that word of really it's, okay, I mean, if, you, if, you, if you're thinking of heaven as a gold road, a yellow gold road and, yeah. and mansions everywhere, you're probably missing the point. Yeah. And the Bible wasn't making those promises. The Bible, again, the writers were giving us reference points to say, hey, you don't get it. This is going to be incredible. And Jesus does use the word that his father, is, he goes to prepare a place, and in my father's house are many rooms. In the original Greek, what's really being communicated is, in my father's dwelling place, there's enough room for everybody. Yeah. Is really what he's saying. Like, there's yeah. room for everybody where we're going to be. He has a, a big house, you could say. He has a big, big house. <laughs> yeah. Lots and lots of room. And lots of <laughs> a Big backyard. <laughs> Yeah, where we can play football. Yeah, we can play football. Okay, there. yeah, let's yeah. do that. Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, you didn't grow up in the '80s and '90s Christian music scene. Um, but the Bible does then give us some again glimpses yeah. of what it's going to be like. It does talk about the light. It talks about uh, it's going to be. Um, I was trying to get to this passage here. I lost my place here. But I think the one thing I love so much about it was when it talked about. The one verse it gives us the picture, which is super familiar, of the pearly gates, mm. and so of course we've we're familiar with pearly gates and all that. Um, but it does say in Revelation twenty one twenty one, it actually says there will be twelve gates, mm. each one made from a single pearl. Wow. So now we're talking like, hold on a second. Like it was already pretty amazing to think of these big. I don't know about you. I always yeah. had the imagery of cloud foundation. Yep. Cloudy, cloudy footing. Big gold gates with yep. pearls on it. Yep. And St. Peter staying there with a check. With, like a with line a of people. Yeah, a line of people. To get in. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. Like a cruise attendant checking people in. Yeah, 100%. And maybe that, I don't know, maybe that'll be the case or not. I mean, maybe that's the book of life. I don't know. But this is saying something different. It, I, I think it's saying, like, listen, we're going to give you something that your mind can't grasp. A pearl so big that one pearl, they can make a gate out of it. Mm. And there's 12 of them. Yeah. So now it's like, oh, wow, that's that's an incredibly unfathomable thing and then uh it also talks about the streets of gold which again we we do think yellow brick road out of wizard of oz but the bible says the streets of gold were so pure they were clear as glass yeah it's crazy and i I, I could be wrong maybe there's a scientist out there it's like no you're wrong i don't know that clear gold exists as we know it i not that i know i I've again, maybe it. like someone could check it and let us know, but yeah, I, I, again, it's like, but that's is that the yeah gold so pure? Yeah. 
again, the reference point in my mind, and this has only hit a few people, is like the Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. And it's like just this, <laughs> but it's just going to be made of gold. Like just this smooth, like you can see forever. And yeah, and it's I, just I, like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's so it's cool to think about. Mm-hmm. Then the Bible talks about the tree of life. It talks about that we will have new bodies. I mean, that was something out of First Corinthians, and and mm-hmm. Jesus even showed and supported that by after his resurrection, he 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 arrived and he had a new heavenly body. Yeah. Um. And so I think one of the coolest things that, that about heaven is, along with all the descriptions, is that it is a uh, it's going to be an existence of no mores. So. Mm-hmm. Revelation 21 4 says, I'll wipe away your tears. There'll be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering, no more anything. Yeah. And that, that sounds good because I think we quickly go to like, well, no more pain sounds great. Uh, no more death, no more sickness, all that. But keep going down that path. Yeah. No more fear. Mm. No more anxiety. No more worry. Yeah. Uh, no more. Uh, Thoughts in the back of your mind that just ah, just play, you know, just I can't can't get past that. Yep. No more regret of my past. Mm. No more maybe shame. no more memory of my uh, past. No more shame. Yeah. I don't believe any of us have ever experienced an existence in our humanness that is completely void of any of that at any given time. Yeah, because I even like right away my mind goes like, well, maybe my daughter who's two, but I'm like. Even as a two-year-old, she's afraid of mm-hmm. one of my good friends dressing up in a bear costume, <laughs> go figure. running around a room like oh, she talks about all the time. Like <laughs> it's just like there's like this this reality of I think you're right. Like there's never even even I think of newborn babies. I was at a at a, a gender reveal party, and they, as soon as everyone cheered when they saw what the what the baby was going to be, this little newborn baby starts crying because it's loud and it's scared. So like, I don't think we've it. ever. Mm-mm. Again, to a point of reference, I don't think we have any point of reference of what it's like to not, mm-hmm. not be afraid, not yeah. be scared, not you know, and then everything else that then comes with it. Well, how about this one? Even no more need, yeah, because mm. even a baby cries mm-hmm. when they're hungry. So, no more need, no more concern, no more. Yeah, yeah I, we have no reference point for that. Yeah, that's crazy. So now we're really getting into some really profound, hard to grasp things. Uh, about heaven, about hell. Um, but this is where I, I think I want us to, to land for, for the next little bit, or the next few minutes before we wrap it up. Um, so if we stop right there, I yeah. think the argument for heaven versus hell, because they are real, because we can't even fathom how bad hell is, yep. we're given some reference points, and those sound terrible. Yep. We can't grasp how incredible heaven's going to be. We're given some reference points. They sound amazing. Is heaven, getting to heaven and avoiding hell, is that the goal? I think for a lot of people, they would say yes. That would be the goal. Like, why would I go to some place that's going to hurt me? Okay. The issue with that, if that is our end goal, in my opinion, is that we're then just missing the point mm-hmm. in general. Good. And I think that's... That's what I really appreciate about Sunday, though, and where this conversation has gone is like, yes, there are there are real locations that we're trying to avoid. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I I'll talk about it later. I just, anyways, but if that's the only thought process, then I think we're mi- and I go back to even the Rob Bell stuff with mm-hmm. like the universals, like we're missing the actual like knowing. Jesus Mm -hmm. and understanding why he did what he did and why he sacrificed the way he sacrificed. And all of that becomes almost secondary to, Oh, I just want to avoid that place. Right. Cool. Let me just do X, Y, Z. And now we're back to checkbox works We're we're, we're missing the faith and the relationship side of, Mm -hmm. of all of this. Yeah. I, I mean, it really becomes religion. Yeah, baby. Yeah, I guess or earth man made religion. I guess. Yep. Yeah, and and if you're not tracking what we're talking about, uh, we're not saying heaven and hell don't matter, uh, but we're saying if 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 our motivation is to do the things of my life to to perform the deeds that I need to perform in order to get a ticket to heaven, so I don't get cast into hell. Yeah. There's a huge. Thing missing out of that scenario, yeah, 
and it and it's it's Jesus. Yeah. And so we have to ask ourselves, am I trying to experience an eternity with him or am I just wanting to be in heaven and Jesus is my ticket? Yeah. And that's what there's a theory out there called or kind of a philosophy called hollow heaven uh, philosophy or hollow heaven theory. And that is that that's what we do is that we're like, well, I'm going to get to heaven. I'm going to experience all this. I'm going to have the mansion. I'm going to see yep. these giant pearls that you're talking about and hopefully not the giant oysters that made them. Yep. I'm going to see all this crazy stuff. Um, oh, yeah. And I think Jesus is going to be there, too. Yeah, he'll be yeah. there. And now Jesus, all he kind of becomes the sidebar or the the. Uh, Maybe the afterthought or the add-on. Well, it's where it's where now the conversation shifts from believing to following. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, if it was only ever just about believing, okay, I gotta believe. Yeah, okay, mm-hmm. he was a real guy. Yeah, and uh, sure, he did what he did. Cool. Now I'm good. Well, then would you just go back to living your life? Like you, you, we begin to like diminish again the sacrifice and the actual like whole process and plan of why there is even a heaven you yeah, can essentially yeah. begin to undermine that because you're we're missing the actual thought of like an understanding of what it means to follow Jesus and why believing is important and why heaven is such a special place and why hell is a place that we shouldn't want to go like there's yeah. um which then probably helps us understand the worst part of hell and the greatest part of heaven yeah. that we can't grasp the worst part of hell is that it is an eternal, because hell is forever. The Bible yep. is very clear. Hell is an eternal forever separation from God. Yeah. So now we're talking about like a void of light in the darkness. This is a void of any presence of God whatsoever, yeah. which we have never felt in our human nature, in our human existence. Yeah. Because God is here, and he's always going after those that are far from him. The Bible talks that he's knocking on the heart of the unbeliever. The shepherd leaves the 99 to go after the one. No matter who you are and how far from God you are and what kind of life you're living, in some small way, you're experiencing the presence of God mm. because he's trying to grab your attention. Yeah, He's continually loving you because he loved us first. Yeah. So to say that you have lived a godless existence, well, you may have lived a godless life, but your existence has never been godless. Mm. You, we've, I don't, I, we've never been in the void of God. Yeah. But hell is going to be the absolute void of God. I, I, I can't even imagine what that's like. Yeah, and I think we got to make sure we don't get it twisted either. Like, the, the glory and the experience of heaven is the fact that we're, we're worshiping him forever. That's the other side of and, it. And I think we miss it, like, yeah. if we're honest, and I'm right there with it, like, when I think of heaven, I'm like, okay. Like, and I'm not that good, but I, I imagine I, I will be Tiger Woods level skilled at golfing. And I will just golf all day in the most amazing course ever. Like, right? Like, I think sometimes we we picture heaven as like uh, this amazing playground. It's Disneyland. Yeah. And it's like, no, heaven is amazing because we're just worshiping Jesus and we're in his presence. Exactly. And that's where it's like, again, you talk about, oh, she's just my ticket to heaven, my ticket to this amazing Mm -hmm. do whatever I want. It's like, no, 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 no. Like that's, again, now you're still missing the point too. It's mm-hmm. like Jesus is the ticket to worshiping Jesus and God forever. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's what makes heaven heaven is, you said, it, yeah. being in his actual presence. That's it. That's forever. the goal. Yeah. Heaven's the location. Yeah. You know, and heaven is part of the reward, but the reward still is yeah. weak to be with him in his presence and this is going back to the very beginning of it, all of it, of how Eden was originally designed to be. Mm. And that's what was so beautiful. They were still in a paradise. Yeah. I mean, the Bible is very descriptive. The Garden of Eden was unlike anything we can imagine. It was perfect in every way. Even mm. the ground was not cursed. And so we'll experience all of that in the new earth. But the beauty of it all was this absolute unhindered intimacy with God the Father who would come and walk in the cool of the evening in the garden. Yeah. That was the win. That was the paradise. That was the heaven. And if we continue to make the location the goal, we're going to miss out on what this is really all about. Mm. And it's all about him. It's all about being in his presence. That's it. That's all eyes are there. Yeah. Um, It's funny. Like I'm thinking through, I was literally just a little bit ago listening to this 
this interview with with Post Malone, a yeah. real brief interview, and he was talking about apparently he had done a, a, a short tour with Taylor Swift recently, yeah. and Post Malone, super famous, whatever, and he was talking briefly about how he was exposed to the craziness it is to be Taylor Swift, even from his perspective, yeah, as a celebrity, yep, and he's like, it's crazy what she has to go through just to even go out, uh, like umbrellas and coverings everywhere, so that drones and helicopters that are following her don't don't get pictures of her and mm-hmm. like she has to work hard just across the street because every ounce of attention is pursuing her. Yeah. And that's just a person. That's just a person here. Heaven's going to be like this entire existence of all the multitudes that are there and they're celebrating not the location, but they're celebrating the presence we are in. Yeah. And I know in our humanness that sometimes sounds like a very long, boring church service. Like you were just going to sit in pews and sing all day. I, I, first of all, I don't think pews will be in heaven. So <laughs> <laughs> not the ones I've sat in. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and again, we can't really grasp that. Yeah. But it is about being with him. Mm. And so when we go to Philippians uh, 3, when Paul is talking about in, in verse thir- verses 13 and 14, you know, forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Uh, that's a super, super powerful statement. But let me read to you how this goes out of the ESV. It words it differently. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Mm. So now we're, I'm talking about heaven. Yeah. We're talking about being in the presence of God through Christ Jesus. And that's, that's always been the goal of all of this. Mm, yeah. I mean, so th- the goal isn't to go to church. Mm. The goal isn't just to read your Bible so that you say, I read my Bible. The goal, yeah. Those are all tasks towards the goal. That's maybe the running the race. Yeah. But the goal is all, even now, it's just, it's just to know him. Yeah. And, and not to perform, not to earn not to not to check off the box, but just to just to know Jesus now and know him more as we grow, as we're refined. I love, you know, several weeks ago, Garrett Carr's talking yeah. here and talking about being just that refiner's fire. We're all being refined, and sometimes that's painful. Sometimes that's miserable and yeah. hard, but it's all still part of the process. I'm getting to know him more. I'm knowing more of Jesus all mm-hmm. the time. Good. Which now means that, you know, we don't have to wait. There's more. There's there's beyond our comprehension more. But we ex- we can experience Jesus now. Yeah. Kind of the goal of what this is all about. Because you used a key word a minute ago. It's about relationships. Yeah. To to actually follow. Yeah. To want to walk step in step with Him and and to be close and to to know. Um. Again, it, it is. It's like I can believe I have a wife, but mm-hmm. to actually follow to do life with her is a way different conversation there's an intimacy involved there's the growth of relationship there's wanting to know more there's never being satisfied with um with how much i do know and Mm -hmm. and there there's there's growth that happens yeah and and so often i again i think we you come to faith by believing but then that next part of it is to become a follower and that is to want to to know him more and that's that that's i love that you just said it that way that's the key is that what you want yeah do you want to know more about Jesus? Do you want to experience more of Jesus? Mm. And if that's what you're desiring, if that's what we want, and so that's what we're pursuing, heaven will take care of itself. Yeah. I mean, we'll, that's where we'll go. That's what yeah. we're promised. But it's not because I believe in heaven. Because mm. Jesus says in John fourteen six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. I, I mean, I am that person. Well, maybe that was that. Let me just quote that. Well, but John eleven twenty five, I think is what I was thinking. He says it here. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? So he's talking to Martha at the tomb of Lazarus. Yeah. But he's talking about, it's, it's about me. Yeah. It's about Jesus. Yeah. And so that takes off the religious pressures. You know, we t- I don't think, we're trying not to be too tongue-in-cheek, but like we tell people frequently here at Baby, like, listen, don't come to church because you have to. Yeah. And I'm sure you have it as much as I do with people that as church attendance becomes a much more, <laughs> a little more sporadic. Yeah. 
I mean, how many times have you had somebody like, I know, I haven't been in church in a while. They're like apologizing. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, well, you don't have to apologize to me. Yeah. I mean, I think church is important, not because the pastor's watching, because, man, that's a, that's another big thing I need each week to grow closer to Jesus, to kind of be with his people and to worship. But it helps yeah. me know him more. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. 100%. And, and it's almost like I, I, we can take off a lot of these parameters, a lot of the pressure, and just say this. If your goal each day is to do the things you can do, whatever is available to you, to know him more and to be closer to him, you're good. Yeah, I agree. You know, you're good. I, I, I trust it fully. I think I heard one pastor say it this way, which is really extreme, but for someone in a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do it absolutely whatever you want. And at first you're like, oh, that sounds like heresy, but I think what's being said there yeah. is, if I'm totally sold out and, and, and pursuing Jesus with everything in my heart, soul, and mind, what I want is what's righteous. It's what's honoring to God. So, yeah, I can do whatever I want because my desires have changed. Mm, yeah. So. That makes sense. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I, I, I think that, that we can spend a lot of time getting lost in the weeds. Uh, and not to oversimplify it, heaven, hell, yeah, absolutely real places. No doubt about it. Yeah. But that's not the goal. I agree. So, goal is know him. Know him more. Know him every day. At the end, somehow, and I do hope there's golf courses in heaven. <laughs> and if we get there and there are mansions, hey, I'm not going to be sad. Yeah, like, rock exactly. on. I don't know. Like, we know we go to heaven for a thousand years, and, and then God creates a new earth, a new Jerusalem is established. And it seems that we spend actually eternity here on a new earth as it was originally meant to be. Mm. So, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm pretty excited to experience it, but not so I can say, hey, I'm in heaven, Yeah. but so I can say, hey, look who I'm with. And I think I, I kind of close with this story Sunday, and, and I think for me it gives me the best assessment of uh, I was recently down speaking uh, in in Sarasota, Florida. It's a beautiful part of the country, and uh, but I was there alone, mm. and I spent time driving around. I spent time going to nice restaurants on the water and eating seafood. I went to the beach a couple times when I had some free time. It was fine. It was, it was okay. But I was doing it all alone. Mm. And my mind, all the time, was thinking, like, this would be so much better if my wife was with me. Yeah. If, if, if I just had my companion, if I had my best friend there with me, because the location is just the location. It's about who you're with. Mm. Heaven's the location. But I have no doubt, it's about who we're going to get to be with. Yeah, exactly. In the end. Yeah, so good. <laughs> cool, cool. Hey, thanks for being with us. Uh, as always, we're here each week. We got a couple more weeks on the question series, and uh, we're going to be hammering out some things uh, as we wrap it up, and then we'll move on. And we're excited about some things we have coming for you. We got some great guests in the future here. And uh, anyway, if you have not done so, click subscribe at the bottom of whatever platform you're listening on. We're on all the major platforms. Uh, we're here each and every week on the Bayview Podcast. For now, it's Andrew. It's Chris. We are out of here, and uh, we'll see you next time around.